everyone, and welcome to another update from the beautiful world of Vera, and we have an exciting showcase for you guys tonight. As you can see, we are not in the Riverlands, but instead in the beautiful Sand Squall Desert. And we are going to be talking about, as you can tell already, the nighttime updates with the skybox updates, some mage updates, and a wand. We have an exciting showcase. And I am joined by three absolute, excuse me, four absolute glorious developers, three of whom you guys have not seen of or heard from ever. But they do glorious work here at Intrepid Studios. Our dynamically glorious duo lighting team, Chris Logan, Gabriel Ford. How are you guys doing tonight? Doing awesome. Yeah, PG. Love Glad it. To be here. Glad to have you guys. Glad to have you both. And also, the man responsible for this beautiful skybox that you're seeing, Todd, one of our glorious senior VFX artists. How you doing, Todd? I'm doing great. Proud to be here. Happy to have you as well. And we have a regular on the stream, one of our senior combat designers, Mr. Brian Ferguson, responsible for all things wand and many other things. Brian, how you doing, buddy? Hey, I'm doing great. Honored to be here, and I'm happy, and ex I'm, I'm just excited to <laughs> get into all the stuff we've been doing on combat. I'm excited, too, because you know what? It's feeling good, and it's looking good. So let's get into it. Obviously, you guys can see we have got quite an update when it comes to the lighting and the visuals of the sky. I'm going to jump on my, my wonderful Shell of the Ancients because you know what? We're talking about skies, and this guy has got some skies on his back. He's got some galaxies on his back. And while I do that, I would love, Todd, to hear from you about what we have done with this sky because it is looking freaking good. Well, thanks. What haven't we done? <laughs> um, one of the main things we did was we converted it over to a cube map, which means that it can actually rotate as the planet itself rotates, which is something we couldn't do before. Ooh, that sounds exciting. And you know what? That sounds like it plays into perfectly what we need the Skybox to do, which is provide us some interesting and compelling predicates for our constellation system. So having that true rotation is also a gameplay component, not just visual. And boy, I got to tell you, Todd, those moons look great. Don't they? I wish I could take full credit for those, but I can't. Um, but I really love the way they turned out with the sky. Yes, they do look good. Gabe, Chris, talk to me about those moons. Yeah, so the the most recent update on the moons is getting them mainly to respond to the the wonderful skybox that Todd created. Um, I don't know if you can find the um, shattered moon behind the clouds, maybe, um, but there's definitely some pickup you can see of the nebula behind it, uh, adding a little bit to it, give it a little bit of life, um, and make it feel like it's it's really a part of the world um, and it's it's responding to. Things that are moving, as Todd said, the nebulas will move through the day-night cycle, and so you'll be able to see that reflected in the moons as well. Um, and I know, Todd, you did some work on some of the VFX for the moon um, explosions and things like that. I don't know if you want to, if we might be able to catch some of that happening. Yep, that yeah. is right. You can see it erupting right now. Ooh. And it's going to periodically do that. That looks so good. And at those of you out in the out in the wild, out in the audience, <clears throat> who are unfamiliar with the lore and ashes of creation, um, we have what are known as harbingers that were kind of the foretellers of the impending apocalypse long before you have arrived back on Vera. One of which struck that moon, and God knows what is happening up there right now. But we know that those harbingers did not bring good things. They we're not bringing the best of things to Vera. Um, but, Chris, Gabe, talk to me about this nighttime lighting, because it is looking dramatic and moody. I love it. Thank you. Um, the, big, the big takeaways were uh, responding to some of the feedback from the community about pushing it 
uh, a bit darker. Um, the nighttime previous to this um, was a little bit brighter. So we're definitely pushing some of the darkness values. I, as a, you know, from a personal perspective, I definitely like to push things as, as dark as the game designers will allow me to. Um, so I'm always happy to, to respond to that kind of feedback. Um, yeah, and with- we, we did get that feedback, by the way. We were, we had shown off, I think it was a couple of years ago, our kind of uh, super first pass on nighttime lighting and players wanted it darker. That was like the overwhelming sentiment that we got from the community. And I feel like with this, with this pass that you have done here with the nighttime lighting, you've struck the right balance between what feels, you know, dark enough to elicit that kind of vibe that you want to see in nighttime um, without kind of, entirely obscuring vision of other players and NPCs or requiring like, you know, a constant torch or light next to you. Right. And that's the, that's the magic of it, right? That's where, that's where the fun, the fun is for me. Um, and I know uh, Chris will probably agree is finding that balance of making it feel the, the inherent feeling of how we understand night and um, how we enjoy playing games because nobody wants to, to play in complete darkness. So um, yeah, it was, it's a lot of balancing on that end. Um, and then working with Todd's uh, Skydo, we did a lot of really great work with bringing in some ethereal, uh, an ethereal atmosphere and colors. And, you know, we've been on the lighting side trying to pull from that as much as possible to give night uh, less of a, a Hollywood blue um, aesthetic to it. And we've been pushing the purples, trying to give it just a, just as much atmosphere and moodiness as we can get away with in uh, the fantasy world of Vera, um, you know, and hope that it hope that it feels the way that we you know we intend it to. Uh, we want it to feel nice and moody and spooky at sometimes, and you know, really push it as far as we can. Yeah, and Chris, talk to me about your guys' plans continued with lighting. I mean, you and Gabe have obviously been working on lighting here for <clears throat> a, f- a few months now, and I know that there's. A lot of updates we're going to be showcasing in the future around the daytime lighting, and that's going to be relatively significant for just the general visuals of the game, um, as we at least can see here with regards to the nighttime update. Talk to me about your guys' plans. Yeah, so Gabe Gabe's working on the TOD system pretty exclusively, and he is doing some really cool stuff that uh, I really has never been done in games before. Uh, some of the some of the stuff he's doing with how the sky reacts, and we actually get color fades from like warms on one end to the really deep cools on the other side. Uh, you know, some of the atmospherics were doing some weather stuff uh, that we're hoping to showcase shortly here. Uh, and yeah, there's a lot of stuff on the horizon. That's what I can tell you. Oh my gosh. I love even how the VFX interact with the lighting. I mean, <clears throat> it really pops. Uh oh, here we go. Hold on. Let me... I'm not ready for you yet. You just chill out. Chill there for a second. Brian, we got to see a little bit there of some of the wand updates. I'm going to showcase that again, and then let's talk a little bit about um, the wand progression. But before we do that, I want to show off an update that the community was requesting with Ball of Lightning. That looks so much better. Oh, no! He's got a weird... A little weird bug. That's okay, guys. As you know, Ashes is a work in progress. There are going to be little bugs you might see here and there. And we show you the good, the bad, and the ugly. Okay. Time for you to go to sleep forever. There we go. He's down. I apologize, guys. You guys can see... You can see some bugs here or there. As you know, we are... Working towards Alpha 2, there are going to be some bugs, but um, Brian, talk to me yes, a little bit about the weapon skill tree for the wand. Yeah, so we've given this a big pass. What you're looking at here is um, seven different ways to customize your weapon. Um, so you can customize the length of your weapon combo. 
you can customize what your finisher attacks are. In this case, you've specialized them into beam attacks, and you've also increased their damage and their, um, their proc rate. What you're looking at there is a status effect proc choice. So every combo hit you do has a chance to proc that status effect. Chilled is a good synergy for your build since you're using a lot of lightning and fire spells. Having the ability to weave a chilled in there um, is is good, uh, like from a hybrid perspective. And obviously those types of choices are relevant, right? Because <clears throat> you have a lot of horizontal choices possible in your weapon progression that is intended to be specced to complement what your ability selections are uh, within the, the archetype or the class. Correct. So right now you're specced for a, a heavy beam focus. Um, there's not much proc synergy going on yet because you haven't unlocked deeper procs. It's just all beam damage. All beams. <laughs> yeah. So um, on so on the right side is weapon combo prog like the right side of the tree in general is weapon combo progression and synergy within the weapon combo, and the left side of the tree is the procs that you get from the weapon combo. Um, so the the upper left of the tree would have a. Uh, two procs that you can choose from that synergize really well with uh, on weapon combo and hit. So every time you complete a combo, you'll be able to, uh, in the upper left, every time you complete a combo, you'll be able to get one of these effects. Um, on, on a normal combo, it's a 25% chance to get it, but on a beam, it's every time. Um, and that gives one of them gives additional damage on hit, and the other one reduces the cooldown of the next spell that you cast. So it gives you that nice benefit. Every time you go back into your combo, you'll get, you'll get something out of it, either just massive damage with this, <clears throat> or you'll get the combo synergy as well. Now, obviously, a lot of people in the community have been discussing kind of the, you know, combat strategy and approach in Ashes of Creation you know, blending between what is your weapon progression and your class progression. Um, and this is something that obviously we are looking to receive feedback on in Alpha 2. That's a very important component of Alpha 2's gameplay is to kind of, you know, collect what the players feel about that moment-to-moment -moment gameplay, weaving between your skill rotation and your weapon uh, use. As you can see, we are investing a lot of <clears throat> diversity options and choice with within these individual weapons uh, and players can choose any number of weapons and progress them as they see fit to complement their different types of rotations they'll have access to yeah each one of these weapons will have a unique progression associated with it um, so you'll be able to level up a bunch of them and um, they're They'll level at about like two and a half times speed I, don't quote me on that of, of a normal uh, a normal adventuring level progression, so you, you'll be able to keep multiples of them leveled up and swap between them. Update to the uh, to the ability Arcane Volley. I think it looks great. Steven did a great job with that. Some lightning updates as well, obviously. And as we showed previously, the uh, fire uh, fireball with three successive attacks. Let us know what you guys feel about uh, that as well. I really think it feels good um <clears throat> let me see if i can find a little dude to try out Anna's, some of this yeah go ahead as you've been casting abilities here you'll notice that the effects on your weapon are swapping back and forth between different elemental effects um that's signifying that your elemental empowerment status is swapping back and forth and we've updated elemental empowerment now whenever you finish a combo it applies the appropriate status effect to the elemental empowerment I love that beam. That beam felt good. Yeah, the beams are really, really sick. I, I, I love that all the projectiles and beams change with the elemental empowerment. Oh, it feels really good. But yeah, th there's a lot of different um, customization considerations that we are taking into account whenever we're setting up the skill tree. Um, 
you, you may want to complete one weapon combo and get back into your abilities rather quickly. Um, that's kind of what you're set up here with just big damage um, and not a lot of uh, a lot of procs at low chance taken. Um, you could take some higher, more guaranteed proc chance and still have that that choice. That's another customization access. You might want to um, synergize your ability rotation with weapon procs. Um, also, you have the status effect application choice. Um, in this case, you're choosing to take something that doesn't synergize with your abilities and instead taking something else that you wouldn't normally have access to easily in your rotation. Um, but you could choose to instead double down on burning and really want to provide a lot of that avenue of status effect for your party or, or double down on the electrified, um, or rather we call it volatile now, that status effect because that's the role that you're playing in your party. Um, and, and one thing to keep in mind too is the wand isn't just available to mages, so you could be a cleric or a bard using this and you want to set up your mage buddy with more tier 1 status effects so that they can capitalize on that and uh, really bring down big damage every time that they're activating one of their abilities. I love it. I also do <clears throat> love the elemental and power effect on the weapons. Um, and those of you who are wondering, this set that you see here is the Carfin Robe set. Oh, let's not... let's stay away from that Berserker. I'll come over here a little bit. I think we're moving into the more undead territory. Um, but those of you who were wondering, as I said, this is the this is the Carfin Robe set. I think it does look great. <clears throat> Character team did a phenomenal job with this set. Um, and obviously the lighting and the materials look really good I'm loving it no no you were not supposed to chase me let's put you to sleep and then perhaps we will light you on fire with this magma ability and see how that goes yeah we did a pass on all these fire abilities no, it did a great job with those. Oh no, the bug again. I'm sorry, guys. He looks like a walking billboard. <laughs> um, yeah, they did. They did a great job with the effects. I think they look. They look phenomenal. Um, now, obviously, that's <clears throat> lighting never really stops getting improved, right? And um, talk to me a little bit about uh, Chris, uh, Gabe, Todd, how um, how that works with VFX, right? How, how does that work with the game in general as lighting gets updated? You know, what are the what are the repercussions that you know we need to update VFX on, and, and how easy is that to do? Yeah, so one of the one of the repercussions we're going to run into um, as we kind of roll out the rest of the, the day night cycle. Um, at nighttime, it's it's not as uh, big of a problem because the values are so much lower, but as we, uh, part of our update process has been moving the lighting to what we call physically based lighting, which really just means we're trying to as accurately as possible um, portray the sun values and sky values as close to the real world as possible. Um, which means that the VFX, especially with something like a, a caster or uh, with magic, they need to still be visible in the game world at, during you know all times of day when the sun is 85,000 you know units. Um, so that that definitely falls onto the the VFX team to kind of keep up with that. Um, and I know that they have some you know some tricks within the engine that they've set up to kind of account for that. But Todd could probably speak to. Um, speak better to what the ramifications are of us doing this very large overhaul on their end. Oh, oh boy, can I. Um, to get, not to get too technical, we have in the materials a material function that will automatically adjust the brightness of uh, emissive particles to adapt to how much your in-game light is reacting to the, to the light or lack of light. Um, and what that means is, at night, you can have something that's really bright, but it won't blind you, but you'll still be able to see it during the day. We can also invert that, we can have it so that effects are more visible throughout the day and the night, and they don't change depending on the, the incoming light. 
Um, and uh, yeah, as we adjust the lighting in the game, we're gonna be relying on that. And we may have to tweak it a bit uh, because you really don't wanna have the player blinded by the particles that he's throwing around. You want it to look real. And that's what we're trying to do. Yeah, and I think in a lot of ways, um, as with you know all of game development, it's a it's a team effort. But uh, materials, lighting, and VFX are definitely um, all need to march on the same on the same cadence. Um, and so Todd and I have spent a lot of time, you know, back and forth with VFX that he's been putting together and um, making sure that it works within the lighting. And a lot of my job is making sure he has what he needs to you know, make sure that his VFX work and, and look good across, you know, all times of day and all different sun intensities as, as it goes from day to night, so. Oh no, I woke up the undead ones. I do love that beam. Yeah. Yeah, I really love how it turned out tech involved in setting up the projectiles and beams with the wand is pretty cool. We're passing through parameters and adjusting the appearance of the projectiles and beams dynamically. This allows for us to have a more precise timing and allows us to reuse the assets a bit more smartly. Instead of having to make a bunch of different assets for different use conditions, we can make one asset and change it dynamically to fit many different use cases. One example in the wand tree is the beam amplifier passive. When you get back-to-back -back beams, not only is their damage increased by 50%, but the appearance of the beam gets upgraded. Usually as devs, we would need to employ a lot of smoke and mirrors to get particle effects to work in a bunch of different use conditions, typically by having many things timed out in concert to give the desired result and changing that timing based on different situations. With this parameter tech, we have the ability to control things in a much more direct and responsive way than usual, which results in a higher fidelity product. You know what else I love? I mean, just sitting here, kind of. When I was a when I was a younger lad, I used to go out to uh, the Imperial County line here in California, out near um, Ocotillo Wells, and go camping out under the the night sky where there's no city lights to infringe upon <clears throat> the beautiful views. And of course, we would take, you know, random stuffed animals doused in gasoline and filled to black powder and blow them up and have paintball fights and do you know quads and shit but um <laughs> just sitting here looking at this tree out in the desert with the sky box i mean it it's very immersive i think you guys have captured a really great kind of essence of that immersive environment and world that you just kind of want to spend time in and explore you guys also hope, right? Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Love it. Absolutely love it. So, <clears throat> those of you out there in the community, this has been an update, obviously, on some of the, um, some of the uh, wand changes, some of the mage um, updates as well. Oh, let me just dispatch this guy real quick. This risen sh soldier, we will send him back from whence he came. He can go to sleep. Oh, he died before I could finish that. Um, we also saw, um, uh, obviously, the the beautiful Sand Squall Desert. Now, of course, biomes require a lot of work to be finished, especially from a content creation standpoint um, when it comes to quest lines, narratives, points of interest. Uh, but as you can see, heading into Alpha 2, you know, a lot of work has been done kind of standing up these these basic biomes <clears throat> that we will have populated uh, with, with content for people to participate in. The Riverlands, of course, being the bulk of of that content oh my gosh hey buddy let's have you go to sleep um oh he interrupted that hold on okay i'm just gonna i'm gonna kill all these things real quick and then we're gonna try this this sign off one more time let's see if we can do it Put him back to sleep first. We'll 
do our updated lightning ball. Requested by the community. Very nice. Um, <clears throat> the nighttime sky um, being updated, obviously, uh, to support our constellation system, but also to sell that fantasy that is the world of Vera, because there is a beautiful story to tell, and it is fantastical. And obviously the work that's going into updating our lighting, as you can see here with the nighttime lighting pass, I think you guys have hit it spot on. But of course, we do this so that we can get your feedback. And what we want you guys to discuss on all of the things that you've seen here today between the weapon progression tree for the wand, <clears throat> how do you feel about those options, uh, both the horizontal options, the vertical options, as well as what we're trying to sell with the wand fantasy and how it interacts with abilities that you are going to be specking into uh, your classes. <clears throat> Um, how you feel about the beam. I really think the beam is cool. Um, and also what you guys think about the nighttime lighting, what you think about the night sky um, and the beautiful biome that we are in. All of this matters to us very much. We take that into consideration when we do iterations. Brian, Todd, Gabe, and Chris, thank you very much for joining me. I had a great time walking through all of these beautiful updates to the game, as I know our community has. You guys are doing phenomenal work. Um, very, very honored to have you on tonight's stream. Yeah, thanks Thank for having us. Yeah, thanks for having us. Absolutely. Happy to be here. All right, we will see you all back on stream. Bye, everybody. <laughs>